Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about my process of doing my dual citizenship. Um, the reason why I want to do this video is because all of these videos on YouTube didn't really help me as much as it was simple and while I explained it didn't really help me with my situation and the reason why I say this is because my situation was kind of complicated and I just want to make this video for people that also have the same situation as me so for example all these videos I saw on YouTube were the mom and the dad involved and were able to help their son or daughter get their dual citizenship but with me it was complicated because my mom is a single mother and my dad my dad is not involved in the picture so for me to do a dual citizenship here in los angeles it's not as easy because you need both of the people present with both of the parents present in order for you to do a dual citizenship another problem that came across from wanting to do a dual citizenship was that my mom when she became a u.s citizen you have the option to change your name so my mom when she was so excited and became a u.s citizen she went from josefina josefina to josephine so that is one of the issues that I came across also. So this was my process. So I'm in Los Angeles, so El Consulado Mexicano is in LA for me. So, you know, I made my appointment. As we all know, if you are trying to do this process for yourself, it's not easy making an appointment for yourself. It takes time. You need to be calling. Sometimes you do get lucky and get an appointment, and that's great. But, you know, sometimes it's like a week ahead, two weeks, and you need to keep calling. So, you know, for me, I was lucky enough to get appointments like a week from, from booking the appointment. But that's not the case even now more than ever. People are trying to get their passport, they're trying to be, do their dual citizenship. So it's getting more competitive with appointments, you could say. So, you know, I go the first time, I take my mom's Mexican birth certificate, you know, keep in mind, I do not have my father present. I have no communication with him. He is on my birth certificate though. I do have his last name. So, you know, there I go, and then the first thing they say, hey, you know, I noticed that your mom's name is not matching with her birth certificate, her Mexican birth certificate, you know, it says Jose Josefina, but on her, on her U.S. ID, it says Josephine, like how, it's like two different people so i'm like well what do we do now like how do i move forward from this so they're like you know your mom has to go back to my mom's from guanajuato so she has to go back to guanajuato try to get a letter saying that you know this is the same person so you know that was kind of discouraging for me because i'm like fuck like you know i need to do something else before i could do this but i'm like don't worry i'm gonna do it you know patience is key whatever so that was like the beginning of january of like two years ago so this process took almost three years it doesn't say three years don't get scared it usually takes like a month but because of my situation it doesn't mean yours is going to take a year just because i was like on and off with the process because you get discouraged you know you don't want to move forward like damn am i ever going to do this so you know my mom ended up somehow going to Guanajuato for her you know vacation and i'm like hey you know this is the time for you to fix that problem because it's not only what's going to be beneficial for myself but for her also because if she wanted to get a ine which is like a identification card 
also a voting card for Mexico, which everyone in Mexico usually has, or a passport, a Mexican passport, or anything she was gonna do in Mexico, she's gonna have to do it no matter what. So it was beneficial for her and also for me. So she went, she fixed it, and also helped her get her Mexican identification because of that process. But the goal was to help me, right? So then she comes back and booked my second appointment. I'm excited, like, okay, what now? They can't say anything. My mom has her identification, her Mexican identification. It matches her with her birth certificate, her birth, her Mexican birth certificate, but also I have that letter saying that it's the same person. What else can they say? So, you know, um, also when you do the um, dual citizenship, you're going to need testigos for, do, for the process, you know. So I printed my grandma because she, you know, she's a Mexican Mexican, and then also my gram, my grandpa. You know, they're gonna be my testigos. So then, you know, I print out like exaggerating because I've heard stories like you know you need to print out everything. I took the actual physical one just in case they need, you just want to be prepared. So then, you know, the lady like I start handing the documents like, where's your father's um documents? I'm like, personally, I don't talk to my father. Um, I have no connection with him like. How do I move forward? You know, the goal is like, okay, I know you're telling me all this stuff, but how we move forward? Like, you're here to help me, you know? And I don't want to sound mean, but it's so true. Like, how do I move forward from this, okay? If this is another obstacle. Like, that of the process with my mom, like, her problem was like almost a year. And like, now I'm getting this, like, now I'm discouraged again. So I'm like, okay, what do I do? So like, you're gonna have to do this process in Mexico. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm honestly working on eight to five. You know, I have other things for myself. As much as I want to do that, I can, like, you know? So they're like, the only way for you to do a dual citizenship, just like either your mom or just your dad, they're not their single parents, it's in Mexico. So I was like, like, by the time I make an appointment in Mexico, take me serious, because even here in the US, when you feel comfortable, you still kind of get lost in the process. Like, how am I gonna do that in Mexico and be driving from LA to, let's say, Tijuana? Like, how long? And I don't even know if they're gonna go on with the process they, if you guys are not even going in the process here. It was frustrating for me. So, I let it go for a while. So I'm like, down, like, I guess this is not for me. You know, I, I saw other friends getting their dual citizenship and they didn't even want it. Their parents were making them do it. Like, you know, just do it. But for me that I wanted it so bad, I couldn't, I couldn't get it. So then I was like, what do I do? What do I do? But she did tell me this and I'm gonna make you guys do it also if you are having no difficult time doing the process here in LA in Consulado de Los Angeles. Go in order for you to do the process in Mexico, you have to get an apostillamiento. So an apostillamiento is your US birth certificate translated into Spanish and stamped from the state. Super easy process not a headache don't even worry about that but you're just gonna have to do that so for me when i did my research and she told me that i looked up online like where was it it was literally i live in east LA, and downtown la is like literally 10 minutes in the building where you turn it in was there they had a, like a little um thing where you drop it off but they also have like for you to deliver it long story short i turn that paper in for them to you you put your original birth certificate you seal it and put it on the little box i'm not kidding i got it and i got the apostillamiento of then translating the english birth certificate to spanish the next following day on the tuesday i was so scared i was like what's like 
this is crazy. So that process doesn't take months. I thought I'm like, well, by the time I get it and I work on wanting to do a dual citizenship, it's gonna take more time. So then, um, yeah, I got it the next day. I was so shocked. I'm like, okay, this is a sign that I need to get back into it. So um, I'm like, now I need to book an appointment in Tijuana because, you know, my mom and my dad don't even talk to each other. I don't even, my dad wouldn't even want to talk to me. It's so sad, but it's like, you can even have these two people in the same room. And I don't talk to him like that. So how do I move forward from just getting a dual citizenship from one person? So me desperately wanting to do a dual citizenship, um, I Googled, I did my research and I came across this person and I'm not trying to promote him, but if you feel that the Consulado Mexicano in Los Angeles or any in the, anywhere in the United States is not helping you, but your parent is Mexican, I don't know why there shouldn't be a problem or an issue of you doing your dual citizenship. Like, you know, like you should. So I did my research. I came across this um, Google review from this person that helps people do dual citizenship. He had amazing reviews. And because me, my family, half of the half of them live in Tijuana so I'm very comfortable with TJ so when I saw where his office was located it's a nice area of Tijuana you know so because I'm familiar with TJ I'm like okay I know where his office is it's like in a nice area in TJ you know you could say it's like the little high-end area you know every Mexico Mexico place has like their nice fancy place and you're like damn this is so nice like does this even I didn't even know this existed well, his office was there, so that gave me type of comfort. Like, okay, if it's like by El Centro, like where, you know, like, and there's nothing bad with having an office in the Centro. It'll be more sketchy, but for me, having been in LA, you know, but when I saw the office that was like in that nice area, I'm like, okay, so he's legit, you know, just because of that. So then I got a hold of him, and, you know, he told me the process. I told him my situation. He's like, Richard, I got it. Like, this is nothing like you're gonna be able to do it so if you have my situation or you have your both of your parents but it's just a house and getting an appointment in a consulado and you're just going back and forth you don't want to do the testigo this person literally he's like this is what i'm gonna charge you you know you don't have to give me all the money you're gonna send me your birth certificate and I did, I already had the posillamiento, you know, because I had just gotten it. Send me your mom's birth certificate and her ID, you know, her identification. So I was like, okay, that's it. They're like, that's it. And so, you know, I was so excited the next, like that same day I was on the phone with him. It was like four, I went to the post office before they closed. I sent them everything. And then he got it the next day. He's like, you'll hear from me from a month. So I zelled him like half of the what he charged me. And he's like, I'll hear from you from a month. And I was kind of scared, like, fuck, like, what do I do? So, you know, here comes a month. I literally was counting. I would check my email, like, did I just get fucking robbed? You know, because it's scary, you know? But I was desperate. A month, literally a month after, he's like, Richard, we're done. He's, he didn't send me pictures. He just told me we're done. And I'm like, okay. He's like, you know, you're you're Mexican now. Like, I'm so... And I was like, wait, all this waiting when I could have just done this process. Like, just me at home and someone done the work. And, like, you don't have to do an appointment or anything. Like, and the reason why I'm making this video is because, like, I, if you feel like me, that you feel discouraged. But you you feel like, why? If my, my parents are Mexican. Like, I should be able to do a dual citizenship. I'm gonna give you his information. I'm not trying to promote him, but I know the frustration. I know how it feels of you wanting to do a dual citizenship and it just fails all the time. So would you rather just pay someone to do the process for you and get everything you need or do step by step, you know, which is still money, like it's not free. So I, he literally said, so then, you know, two days happen, I'm like, hey where's my paperwork like i haven't gone he's like oh, Richard, i sent it already so i was like oh. so then 
um, I checked the mail and there was my Mexican passport, the registro civil from Tijuana for myself. And I'm like, what can I do with this now? He's like, you get your Mexican passport now. And I'm like, oh, no way. So then I called the consulado now in LA to book my passport appointment. And I, I couldn't believe it. Even the process, I'm like, are they gonna accept these papers? Are these papers fake? Like, am I gonna be able to get my passport? Like, are they gonna be like, oh, well, you did the process in Mexico, go do it in Mexico. I was fucking nervous. So then um, I get there, I was still fucking shitting it. I was like, fuck, like they're not gonna fucking want to take these documents because I didn't do this process in the consulado, you know, in LA. So all I showed was what he sent, a birth certificate that belongs to me. Oh, he also gave me a CURP. And a CURP is like a social security number in Mexico, which is pretty cool. But anyways, they don't need that. It was just my actual Mexican birth certificate and some form of identification, which is my, my driver's license. Pretty scary, right? Like, they're going to give me my passport, which is these two documents. How am I even in the system? Like, all these thoughts. And yeah, they literally just took my birth certificate, my ID, and they gave me my passport there and then. And I'm like, shit, this was real. Like, I cannot believe it. To this day, I got my dual citizenship. I got my INE. Um, I wish I could show you pictures, but because I'm making this video from my office and I have time, I didn't, I would have been showing it off, but I do have a picture the day I got it. So this is my Mexican passport and my actual US passport. I was very excited. Um, yes, oh, this is my picture. I don't know if you could see. Oh, I was happy, like, yeah. I was so happy and then yeah so um this is a zell that i paid him off the other half so yeah um, i just wanted to make this video just in case if you are struggling with the same problem that i did you know just go that route i know it's pretty cool when you see these people that have a pretty pretty easy like you know they organize all the paperwork and then you're trying to do it but you're not able to follow along like they did and you you come through other obstacles like why not just get someone that could help you honestly i don't know if the prices went up but it was not more than 500 no more than 300 no more than 200 dollars from what he charged me i don't even think it was more than 200 it was less so you're gonna waste more money on gas waste your time because it's not just going and they'll take you right away. You sometimes wait more than four hours. You're still gonna, they're gonna come up with something like, oh, like you're missing this. Everything is sadly is corrupt. So depending on who you get, it's gonna make your life good or you're trying to make it complicated. And it's sad, but it's the truth. So you have this guy that's, he, he, um, his 100% focus is working with cases like mine or simple cases that you just have it and he'll do everything for you and all you just have to do is wait, why not? I'm telling you, it wasn't expensive for me, my mindset and my, my income, you know, but I'm telling you, nothing is more than, it wasn't more than 200 for sure. Um, so why not, right? And nothing is, cheap nowadays you know and if you're gonna if you're not going to if you're gonna what i'm trying to say is if you're gonna benefit from it why not do it you know one of the reasons why i got it was because every time i travel in mexico and i show my identification because i was the only identification i have which is like a, U a u.s passport or my driver's license yo sé español yo sé hablar español pero deben get in abusar de ti ya que ven que eres you know American so probably you know like oh vive del otro lado and like they try to take out money from you know they, they're poor seeing like living in Mexico they take advantage of their own people imagine being from the extranjero it's like you're a big target you know and you might say by identification 
doesn't make a difference you look like you live on the other side you know or you don't whatever the case is but it'll give you that comfortness and mostly for me like you know like i don't have to show my u.s passport i could show them that oh um there's no reason why i will need to show them my u.s passport if i'm traveling within mexico you know it's like i'm in the system i'm mexican you know and i give that comfortness you know but that's my reason why i wanted to do it plus like those fees like i remember i wanted to travel volaris and then you get to the aeropuerto de tijuana and then they're charging you those extra fees when you're staying more than seven days and you're just like what the heck is this i supposedly you know wanted to um save and like now all this came to me like what is this you know but i'm gonna put the information of the person that helped me um and i hope you guys could get a contact of him i'm not promoting him um no i think he does deserve a round of applause for everything he did um i haven't written a review for him so hopefully this video helps him get people his his mindset is well he means good for other people he wants other people to do his their dual, dual citizen also also he not only does that he does like residencies if you're trying to like live permanently in mexico all this other stuff he's really good he's super young also um he answered all my questions like literally i'll be like hey like what color is it gonna be? like stupid shit i'll tell him he didn't mind he'll answer them um but yeah so you know it's sometimes it's not easy i know these youtube videos are the first things we look at when we trying to do our dual citizenship and it's like like oh my god like okay i need to do this but not everyone's process is gonna be as easy as these youtube videos and hopefully someone i could help someone that maybe has the same issue as me and they feel discouraged to move on with the process like hey there's help maybe you know you wanted to do it on your own so bad but i think this is comes to a time where can i have there's actual people and resources that will help you because for me sadly i didn't get it in a consulado so you know this is another way around it um like i said i'm going to write down his information if you have any questions for me um you can reach out to me uh my instagram is richard tapia r-i-c-h-e-r-d-t-a-p-i-a um you know if you send me a message like hey i saw your video you know i'm not trying to like rock and become a youtuber or anything but um you know i could guide you like hey this happened to me i'm gonna give him his information just be like hey you know richard recommended me you know he's gonna remember who i am trust me because i'm very talkative like how i am in this video but yeah um just write your thoughts or comments here and I hope this video helped and I hope you guys have a good day don't stress yourself out and let's just move forward and that's it for me goodbye